Hello, it's Rev James here again with Lent with Evelyn Underhill. The first Saturday in Lent, the three councils considered. First, think of poverty, even outward poverty, a hard and simple life, the dropping for love's sake of the many things we feel we must have is a great help in the way of the spirit. Far more precious is the inward poverty of which is the sacrament, which frees us from possessions and possessiveness and does away with the clutch of the I, the me and the mine upon our souls. We can all strive for this internal grace, this attitude of soul, and it is a very important part of the life of prayer. The Holy Spirit is called the giver of gifts and the father of the poor, but his cherishing action is only really felt by those who acknowledge their own deep poverty, who realise that we have literally nothing of our own, but are totally dependent on God and on that natural world in which God has placed us, which is the sacramental vehicle of his action. When we grasp this, we are ready to receive his gifts. Some souls are too full of pious furniture and ornaments, that there is no room for him. All the correct things have been crammed into the poor little villa, but none of the best quality. They need to pull down the curtains, get rid of the knick-knacks and throw their premises open to the great simplicity of God. Chastity. The council of chastity does not, of course, mean giving up marriage, but something more subtle and penetrative. It really means the spirit of poverty applied to our emotional life, all the clutch and feverness of desire, the I want and the I must have, taken away and replaced by absolute single-mindedness, purity of heart. This may involve a deliberate rationing of the time and energy we give to absorbing personal relationships with others, unnecessary meetings, talks and letters to special tastes and interests, or, worst of all, self-occupied daydreams and broodings about ourselves, cravings for sympathy and interest. We have to be very firm with ourselves about all this, marking war on every kind of possessiveness, self-centeredness and clutch. From all these entanglements, Christ's spirit of chaste love will set us free, for it is a selfless, all-embracing charity, friendship with God and with all his creatures, for his sake. Obedience. This means the total surrender of our wills, which are the greatest obstacles to our life giving to God. The more we get rid of self-chosen aims, however good they are, the more we supple the more supple we are to his presence. The nearer we get to the pattern of the Christian life, which is summed up in not my will but thine be done. Then not before we are ready to be used by used as God's tools and contribute to his purpose. Since God is the true doer of all that is done, it is always for him to initiate and for us to respond. And this willing response is the essence of obedience. Obedience means more freedom, not less, for it lifts the burden of perpetual choice and in doing so actually increases our power of effective action by making us the instruments of God's power. When the whole church is thus obedient to him, it will be what it is meant to be a fellowship of created heaven-led souls with power to fulfil its vocation of transforming the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This has been Rev James with the first Saturday of Lent with Evelyn Underhill. See you next time.